um, and my sort of um, six o'clock starting to drink wine became five o'clock and I must admit this week I've gone to 4.30. <laughs> Welcome and thank you very much for joining us tonight. I thought we would just do a quick map to situate where we are. Um, we've got Bordeaux um, into the sort of top left hand corner and this is the whole of the southwest wine region in, in France which has got um, some, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty big area but then you come down into the Armagnac area and it's um, so, the, so therefore this is where they make Armagnac and Christophe also produces some, some very delicious Armagnac. Um, and it's called the, so it's the Côte de Gascoigne area. And so, and they're right slap bang in the middle of that sort of central Armagnac area. Um, so please um, tell us a bit about your, your family history, the, les, les Frères Lafitte, your two brothers, you've got two ducks on a tandem. What's, um, what's the significance of all that? Um, the ducks and the, the goose are typical uh, animals from the region. Uh, donc, we are uh, two brothers, donc, uh, the duck uh, is me and the goose is uh, Sébastien. On a tandem, on a tandem, uh, why a tandem? Because we are two, two brothers, so a uh, tandem uh, live for two persons. This is Sauvignon Blanc, it's got 12% alcohol and it's got a slug of, of Gourmand Song in it, so I suggest everybody has a, a swirl. It's a big slug now. <laughs> Like, well, I think well, uh, is a good variety is very typically from the region, uh, only uh, only next to Pyrenees, uh, and the Sauvignon is uh, uh, one of the most popular uh, uh, good varieties in the world. But uh, Gromancien is a very um, uh, very local. It's uh, donc, uh, this wine is uh, semi sweet. Eh? Uh, donc you have eighty uh, percent of Sauvignon and twenty percent of Gromancien. There's a real sort of spice. I don't know what some um, tasting notes everybody else is getting, but I'm getting, so it's really sort of, there's, there's a spiciness yes, um, coming. It's got 12% alcohol. And what is the, there's a, there's a, a bit of sweetness there, um, um, Christophe. What, what is the sugar level? And is it that, is that the Romancin which is giving that? Uh, Romancin uh, is um, uh, a good way of it is. You can make uh, uh, dry white wine, Sweet wines, uh, you can. Uh, donc, the sweet from the wine uh, become from the Gromancien. Voilà, the sweet from the wine. You have uh, an equilibrium with uh, 9 or 10 grams of sugar. It's more spicy and fruity than sort of than, than off dry. So that's, um, that's an interesting one. Now, the, the other thing is that all, all of your wines, that they're all 12 or 11.5%. We, we have become used to a lot of much um, heavier alcohol wines. So what, how come um, you managed to get such a lot of flavor out of a wine with, on, with only 12% uh, alcohol? No, uh, in the region we have um, low alcohol, uh, all, all the, the range. Yeah, it's easy to drink, easy to drink. it's fresh. fresh. Right. The particularity from the region, easy to drink, fresh, uh, fruity, fruity, with and great, uh, not too, not too much alcohol. It, but but um, it, as a speciality of the region, I've not come across a blend of Sauvignon Grand Mansang before. So it, this, this the, is something. The, the, the blend of Sauvignon Grand Mansang uh, is uh, one of, the, of our best sellers uh, because it's not uh, too dry, it's not sweet. I, my, my first, when I first smelt it, my, my I mean, I'm, I'm seeing sort of um. Uh, sort of floral edges, but I got grapefruit. I sort of smelt grapefruits. You have a white fruits, a peach, a uh, peach, you have a peach, yes, and you have a peach, ananas, ananas, pineapple, pineapple, uh, you have uh, exotic fruit. Uh, it's a uh, very uh, fruity and fresh. I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic summary wine. I've got to say. I ac accidentally poured my rosé first and have now had to go to the white and but I actually think Mark could we taste them both side by side and it'd be really good to talk through what tasting those so we, we've talked about um being quite floral grapefruit in the Sauvignon uh Grosman saying um 
what should we be picking up if even just smelling them both and it's quite nice to look at the different colors as well and um what should we be seeing in in the in the rosé so, so the rosé is a uh, blend it's sorry it's a, it's a um it's a malbec and cabernet franc is that that's correct isn't it uh, well again now we've had those before in the um hang on let me just pour a glass what is it? It's a blend. Blend with the Tanat and Cabernet from. Wait. You, you you crush the grapes and the wine pretty much comes out that colour, so you yeah. don't leave it, you don't leave it um, to to sit on the grape skins to take any colour. It just comes yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we uh, uh, we harvest uh, by night. Well, with the uh, cold temperature, okay. harvest yeah, by yeah. night. The we harvest to. Uh, Three o'clock to uh, ten o'clock. Okay, so mm. so 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 at it, when it's at its coolest. Mm. I'm, I'm definitely getting tinned oh, strawberries, not fresh so strawberries. Tinned strawberries. Tinned strawberries is very different to fresh strawberries, and it's lovely. Very different. I think that the the reason why these are successful is they've got that so, that's a, a little bit of sweetness that's a, some natural left over from the fermentation. But also with some nice crisp acidity makes it a really good balance. Um, so, so, so this is just the colour that comes from the, this grape is just from crushing them and not letting them sit in the tank, which which is remarkable. But it's a very pretty colour. I don't know if everybody's looking at, at as much as you can get because as much pleasure out of the colour of a wine as you can out of sipping see, it. Quite uh, because if you have uh, all the harvest. All the, all the harvest in the in the vats, uh, you have uh, rosé uh, much colored, uh, like uh, éclairé. Éclairé. It's yeah, uh, yes. between uh, between uh, rosé wines and red. It's uh, different. Yeah, I think you've got but, the, uh, this lovely we, light we color. Want, we, want, uh, light, we want a light color. Uh, uh, voilà. But uh, we don't. We, we press uh, uh, next harvest. The fit of area. Um, I've, I've got, I, I think I've got a question. I can surmise from the fact that we've got loads of people drinking wine in their gardens tonight. It's been a really hot day. Um, Mark, what temperature? Are, I've got a feeling that, I mean, maybe it's just because it's warmed up in the glass, but I kind of feel like none of my wines, I probably haven't got them cold enough. What temperature should we be drinking the rosé at? In France, you, you have it less chilled, less cold than we do in, in this country. I mean, my fridge is set at six degrees, which is um, the, the perfect sort of cold wine temperature. So I think, I think it's, it, yes, if you have it too cold, if you, the colder it gets, the let, you, mask, you hide the flavor. And um, what would you um, pair with both of those wines in terms of food? I think we can all agree the low alcohol means that you can just drink and drink and drink. Um, but if we were going to pair with anything, what would we what would we eat with them? So with this kind of wine, like with high sugar level, we can pair with um, some desserts, obviously some um, spicy cook, spicy right. cook, Thai like cook. Thai mm. food, Thai cuisine. Thai cuisine. Yeah. Thai cuisine mm. Yes. Right. Because uh, with Grand Saint you have the sugar, and with the spicy cook, it's uh, uh, you have uh, a best uh, moniki, a, a good pairing, a good it's pairing well right. balanced. Mm. Uh, yes. With uh, with uh, uh, on va dire, uh, blue cheese in France, on va dire ça, fromage bleu, like roquefort uh, with the cheese, uh, gros mansem, petit mansem, uh, voilà. with uh, with uh, blue cheese, with uh, with uh, with uh, cheese, with, uh, with uh, spicy cook, play cook, and after uh, with ça, with, uh, with a dessert, oui. Mm. I jelly. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, and I get. To, I think it's that spiciness and that hint of hint of hint of sweetness makes it. It would go and it would go really well with a Thai. I'm not sure it's a, a vindaloo, but a, but certainly a, a Thai green or red curry would be fantastic. Um, and and it would cope with it because it's got enough flavour to cope with it. And that's on the white. I think the the rosé is a bit more delicate. It hasn't got that spice. It's a bit more sort of a refreshing. Um, <laughs> less spicy food to go with it but both of them i think um you know certainly all day long drinking wines i'm sorry i've just had a, a, a smell of my lovely red wine it's a beautiful it's just the nose is just gorgeous so, so this is another um 12 percent wine it's red um it's malbec cabernet franc um 
and the color I'm, I'll just talk my way through the color which is it's a very it's a light color uh, and this is young it's purple if you if you, you you know you hold your glass at an angle like that and look down onto a white tablecloth or something just to look at the rim and it's very the, the younger a red wine is it's got that pur the purple really purple edge but this is quite a light color and it's a, it's a lovely fresh color i mean i said this is, this is a wine for drinking within a year maximum two it's not a wine for aging it's a wine for just enjoying the moment if you, if you want you, you can serve this uh, this well wine a little bit little chilled, bit yeah. chilled. it's possible yes uh, yeah. well, it's possible um we have make uh, red wine uh, uh acid par par mer par strange not too acid oui. not too sorry not too oui. this is a it's a wine that's um made for um immediate and easy drinking as opposed oui. to um cellaring and aging and it, th this is a wine it's not been it has not been in a in a barrel um, mm. It's got soft tannins um, uh, uh, rather than hard tannins, so it makes it easier to drink now. Um, and I think I think that the, the the smell says that. I mean, you, you, you when you have a wine that's been aged in a barrel, of course you get that barrel flavour coming through. But here you don't. You're getting the, purely the fruit, lovely fruit. Mark, what um, what percentage of Malbec to Cabernet Franc is it? Christoph. Hello. We have. Uh, 10% of Cabernet Franc and 90% of uh, Malbec. Malbec is a crop. Total Malbec is the same way foods. In Cahors, uh, the name of Malbec is called uh, Cot. Cot, uh, Cot is a uh, grape varieties from south from France. Uh, the same thing from uh, Gros Mancin, Petit Mancin. Yeah, it's your local, it's your local, you've taken ownership of it. But yeah. I think this is, this is a, Again, all all three wines. There's a sort of a strain running through all three wines here. Makes them all really <laughs> very easy drinkable, to drink. easy drinkable. to drink. Malbec's normally associated or is famous um, with Argentinian wines. Is it like a typical French grape as well? I'm just belying my complete lack of knowledge here, but I'm happy to be the dunce in the classroom. Uh, Malbec is a grape which is a minor oh, yeah. grape in France, uh, except what? for. This Cot is the, is the, the well name from this uh, grape variety, Cot. Yes, yeah, so uh, their local name for Malbec is Cot. Malbec, Malbec is Cot. Yeah, Ma Ma Malbec is grown as a minor grape variety in Bordeaux. So if it's, yeah. if you have uh, yeah, you Cabernet can, Sauvignon, you can, Merlot, and yeah. you have some Malbec, some Cabernet Franc, and, and some um, Petit Verdot in, yeah. in, in small single figure percentages. But, but completely it, different like flavor profile to what people it, might expect if they see Malbec as a varietal on the label. They're kind of expecting something that they can drink with Argentinian steak and is going to be really punchy. And actually, it's a very light drink. Gary and Patricia, stop laughing at me. I can see them laughing at me. They <laughs> laugh. The more I drink, the more they laugh. Same with you, Vicky. I know <laughs> what you're doing. If you see Malbec as the varietal, it's probably not really what you expect. It is the same grape variety, but for, by the same dint, if you have a Pinot Noir from the north of Burgundy, you get something very light, something very um, light coloured, so quite um, uh, it's a light, intensely flavoured, but not heavy, not heavy duty. If you go to a Pinot Noir from central Otago in New Zealand, as, as yeah. we've had, really they're really good. rich and chocolatey. Yeah. Um, you can have a Cabernet Franc from the Loire Valley, which is light, and um, quite acidic, uh, and you can have a Cabernet Franc from um, from Ridgeback in South Africa, and it's a big beast of a thing that's been in an oak barrel. So, it, 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 yes, the, they are the same grape variety, but of course, when they're grown from different plants around the world, they produce very different things. Hopefully, you all agree that trying the rosé um, and the red alongside that actually just makes you realise some. Uh, wineries have a real uh, personality and I think I really get that from these wines they're all very different but so similar in that they're light low alcohol drinkable um, very summary very summary yeah exactly um, so it's quite fun kind of doing it like that and probably more so than some of the other wines that we've tasted in this case where we're having each winery week by week you actually get very different profiles than the ones we taste. Actually, these have very similar tasting profiles, which is quite nice to taste side by side. Um, so, yeah, 
agreed we love the Sauvignon I think thank you so much um yeah it's been it's been great everyone's loved it thank you Christoph thank you and Louis thank you for your help and everything lovely to see you and to taste your wines and uh, we'll carry on drinking and cheers up cheers, cheers. cheers. Yeah. very good health good night everybody see you next week good night